Good evening, everyone. This is Apostle Misha Saftie welcoming you to this special Tuesday night edition of Study in the Word. Although it's not Tuesday night and it's Monday night, we've been doing a kind of a Tuesday night Study of the Word marathon as I've been preparing a studio and learning how to use it and practicing and doing a few different things every now and then to... Uh, begin to learn how to format and program our lessons so that as we expand our uh, viewers to those in other countries and other places, we can provide a better, uh, maybe more professional look to what it is we're trying to do uh, while we're uh, doing these out of the humble uh, uh, environment of my office, okay? so. Without any other way of putting it, uh, we'll put it that way. So this evening, folks, I want to talk about patience. 
And I want to deal with the subject about of giving people a piece of your mind. I mean, how many times have we gone through situations where we've heard or we've thought ourselves, well, I'd sure like to give that person a piece of my mind. There are some people that if they gave everybody a piece of their mind, as they say, they would have nothing left for themselves because they'd give it all away. There are some people that are always going around giving a person a piece of their mind. And we have to learn, especially, and I'm speaking more to Christians than I am to those that are uh, perhaps outside of the body of Christ, but but for those outside too, this certainly is something to think about and would, would apply and probably would help. But folks, as, as Christians, we really have to watch our behavior towards one another and really towards others in the community because there are always people watching. And I thought about an interesting situation, that, and, and this actually happened to me today. I got a call this morning. I was... Um, or my wife got a call this morning from my daughter. And I was on the telephone doing something else, and uh, all of a sudden, my wife says, we have an emergency, we have an emergency, get off the phone. So I basically just disconnected the telephone. What, what's going on? Uh, she said, well, your daughter, or my, our daughter, so she, she got, got into a car accident. And I said, well, how bad is it? Well, I don't know. Did you talk to her? Yes. Okay, well, at least I know she's talking. but." Apparently, it was a serious accident. So, I drive down. I, I, I right away. I'm already. I, I grab my shirt, put it on. Drive down to uh, about a, a my, maybe it was a mile from my my house that it happened. Maybe a quarter mile. And as it turns out, some guy and a woman in her in the car i guess they're arguing with each other talking to each other not paying attention and they ran a red light as my daughter's crossing the intersection she has the green light she's crossing the intersection to go they run the red light in a 25 mile an hour zone they run the right, the light going about 60 miles an hour and hit my daughter now they hit the they it was an angel of god that because if they had hit the side of the, her car or anywhere near the front, it could have killed her, it could have put her in the hospital, only God knows what could have happened to her and to the, 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 the individuals in the other car. As it turned out, I mean, she clips, they clipped the front end of her car, tear up the front end, tear up the bumper in the trunk, or I should say the hood. But, I mean, she's able to get the car off the road. And <clears throat> so I get out there, and I, when I get there, there's already a, a police officer and if you know me and you know anything about me, you know that I've spent uh, over 40 years, actually, as a professional investigator in, in, in law enforcement. I've worked with the government. I've worked private, uh, with a private agency. Uh, I've, I've, I've worked in, in uh, an intelligence and everything. So it's not like I don't know the law. And, you know, with, with me and probably maybe with, with some of you, I, I can only say this, but it certainly gave me something to think about. My investigative uh, instincts kicked in when I got there. And when I got there, I see this other guy's car parked off on off the road onto a, a dirt area. And I, I, I looked at the situation real quick. I see the damage to her car. Are you okay? Yes, she's okay. Then I look over at the other car. And I'm fuming. I'm At, that, at this point, I'm, I'm getting very angry. And I'm getting mad about it. And I'm thinking, what is this idiot you know that was what was going through my mind what is this idiot doing going 60 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone running the light he could have killed my daughter he could have you know he could have killed whoever's in his car and I'm, I'm i'm pretty angry about it now i didn't go and confront him I, but everything in me wanted to i would have i, I wanted to go over there and, and and ask him what the heck he thought he was doing and and, and i had a few ideas of what I wanted to say. As it was, since there was already an officer on the scene and he had already written or began his report, I just waited to see what it, he told me, get to get an idea and a clear understanding of what happened. But I was thinking about it and I know that what I wanted to say, but I didn't say it. I just went ahead and kept my cool about the situation. But I wanted to give the guy a, 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 that was driving, certainly I did, a piece of my mind. I really did. And 
I even told the police officer, I said, look, I said, I understand a misdemeanor. I understand an accident. Uh, I do. I realize accidents can happen. But when somebody's driving 60 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone, speeds through a light and hits somebody, I said, to me, that's not an accident. That ought to be a criminal misdemeanor or a criminal uh, charge for, you know, some type of assault with a deadly weapon almost, you know, because you could kill somebody, I, t- I told him. And I, I really, I was just thinking, you know, more with my emotions. And of course, I already know what the law is. And I understand that's probably all that's going to happen. It's a civil issue and not a criminal issue. Unless the guy is drunk or on drugs and they didn't, buy, I don't think, bother to investigate it. Maybe they did before I got there. But anyway, it is what it, what it, what it is. So I called the tow truck got her car towed to the, uh, to a tow shop, you know, did what I had to do over there. And as I was, but by the time I had called this guy, I think God, he had had insurance. At least I I hope it's good. Uh, I called his insurance company, called our insurance company, filed the claims that we needed to do. And, and, you know, just took care of that kind of business. But that time I pretty much it cooled down. And so I'm driving back home, and as I drove home, I thought I, I, I thought about this, and I thought, you know, if you'd have really given this person that piece of your mind, what would have happened if you gave him a piece of your mind, and then, because I, I minister in so many different churches, and here on online, and, and I, I speak a lot of places, folks, what would happen, though, if that person, after I got finished just l- giving a, a, a verbal lashing, what would have happened if the next week he walked into one of the churches and I was there speaking and talking about the love of Jesus? You see? You, we can't just give somebody else a piece of our mind, no matter how justified we feel we are and no matter how right we feel we are. We're a witness because when you become a Christian, there's a target that's placed on our backs. And Satan is trying to take advantage and cause us to stumble and to fall in any way that he can. But we are also marked because people know when you're a Christian. I, I, I guarantee you, whoever you are out there, and you may not feel like you're significant and that there, anybody would have any reason to pay any attention to anything that you do. But when you become a Christian, there is a magnifying glass, a proverbial magnifying glass over your life, and people are watching you to see how you react and what you do. And they're especially interested in knowing how you're going to react in an adverse situation. Like, in other words, if somebody starts to uh, fight with you, are you going to punch them, or are you going to take the higher road and try to de-escalate the situation? In my situation, I could have easily walked over to that guy and, I mean, got really got into him. And if he got out of his car and tried to do something, knowing what I know and what I do as a living, I could have put that guy on the ground really, really fast. Okay, but what would have happened and what kind of a witness is that? What kind of witness would it be to him and to his wife? Who this guy admitted, you know, I wasn't uh, paying attention. I was talking to or arguing with my wife or something, and I got my eyes off the road, and I didn't realize there was a light there. So I mean, he told the truth. But but that being said, what if I had reacted the way maybe some people think? Well, you had a right to react that way. If that had been my daughter, I would have done the same. The folks, yeah. But we we have to walk with wisdom, and we have to walk under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How do you walk under the anointing of the Holy Spirit? How do you bring the Holy Spirit into situations where people's lives could be in danger or at stake or or the emotions are high and the adrenaline is going? How How do you walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh? Well, folks, the Bible tells us that we need to be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. There are some people, sadly, out there they don't believe you can even be filled with the Holy Spirit. They just believe in the Holy Spirit. But if you were to try to tell them there were miracles, you could be baptized in the Spirit and all these other things, they don't even want to hear it. There are some people that just don't believe. Folks, we, those of you that are watching me probably come from the same, same uh, uh, understanding of the Scriptures, the, the correct understanding of the Scriptures that, that I do. And you understand that, that we, there is a Holy Spirit. It dwells within us. We, we were baptized into it. We, we were empowered by it. 
and the Holy Spirit is provided to guide us, the Bible says, to teach us unto all things pertaining to righteousness. So we have the presence, we have the Spirit of God, because that is what the Holy Spirit is, dwelling within us. But folks, what good is it to have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you if you can't behave in a godly manner under difficult situations? Okay, it's always easy when everything is okay to say, God bless you, I love you, it's no problem, it's okay, and put a smile on her face and have a sweet Christian grin and attitude and everything like that. It's easy to do that. When, when, when nothing is really wrong and you're not really offended by something, it's easy to be gracious. When we're put to, we are put to the test, though, when everything within us says, you have a right to be mad. You've got a right to be angry. You ought to be angry. You ought to let that person have a piece of your mind. You ought to tell them. And you know that you're, 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 you, you would be in the right place to say something. But being able to, at that point, draw from the Holy Spirit, exercise the restraint, and instead walk in love, that, folks, is when our spirituality and our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit is really tested. And I mean, I, I, I got to tell you, I, I'm being honest with you, I got to admit, you know, I, I, I was tempted. Uh, everything in my flesh wanted to go over there and have a confrontation with that guy. I was, the things I was thinking, I was mad. And I thought a lot of things, irresponsible, you, you stupid, um, you know, what the heck do you think you were doing? The things that you, as an investigator, when I was, before I was really walking with the Lord, that I would have gone over and said probably to that person then if I had came on the scene and saw something like that. I might have reacted that way. I may, Maybe I would have. Probably would have. Anyway, it occurred to me, what if you get mad and, and got mad at that guy and the lady that was with him and they appeared in the church you're attending on a regular basis here in Yuma when you're not out ministering. Or they show up at one of the churches when you're one of the guest speakers. Then what? You've just blown your testimony. You've just blown anything you could have ministered. And anything that you have to say from that point is going to go in one ear and out the other as far as they're concerned because they already saw you react. They saw your... Um, yeah, your reaction. They saw how, how you really are as opposed to what you might be saying. They saw your character come out. And so you have nothing to say that they would be interested in listening to. Why am I, I saying all of this? Well, I'm going to get into some, to some scripture, but this is a foundation I'm trying to lay. It's a, it's a long foundation, but it's a relevant foundation because, folks, all of us have people. Now, in our, in our lives, in our families, our husbands, our wives, um, those of you that, 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 that are married, your husbands and wives, your children, maybe a, a, a situation with somebody at work. Maybe you get in a similar situation as I, as I got into today. And maybe it's not your, your children, but it's you. And somebody just cuts you off and you first thing you want to do is something you shouldn't do. I mean, these are the things, though, that happen in everyday life. Somebody cuts in front of you in the grocery line. You've been sitting there. It's hot outside. You want to get home. You're tired of walking around in the store. You're in line. You've got your groceries. Somebody just cuts in front of you. Um, you could say, excuse me, um, or something like that. <clears throat> but if you see that it's, it could lead to conflict, sometimes the better thing is to be gracious and say, yeah, yeah go ahead, sir. Go ahead. By all means, you know, and I realize you're in a hurry. You know, go ahead. I got all the time in, in the world today. Um, there are ways to handle things. <clears throat> and we get into these issues and these situations with people, but most of the time we lose our awareness of the Lord because of familiarity to, with others. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm getting away from the accident issue and getting more into the situation of our personal situations at home, maybe at church. <clears throat> I used to think there should be a scripture in the Bible because I've heard it the saying so many times. I actually thought this was in the Bible once. Familiarity breeds contempt. Now, the Bible doesn't say that, but in the roundabout ways, it actually does say that. It says kind of like a man of many friends comes to ruin and things like that. So it, it doesn't say familiarity breeds contempt. Uh, it's not in the Bible. But folks, familiarity 
does breed contempt because when you get too familiar with people, you know them sometimes or you you have a tendency to relate to them after the flesh instead of after the spirit. Now we know that's true because Jesus Christ himself went into Nazareth when he was in, in, in ministry. He went back to his hometown and the Bible says he could barely do any miracles because of the unbelief of the people. And what was their unbelief? Familiarity. They said, we, we know this, this man, Jesus. I, we've heard about the miracles, but nah, this can't, this can't be. We know him. This is, this is the guy that, he's the son of the carpenter down the street, Joseph. We've, we've known him growing up since he was a little kid. So they, they, they saw Jesus Christ after the flesh. And so because of that, the familiarity was uh, uh, bred contempt. And they had a contemptful attitude towards him and towards who, who he said he was and, and his representation and actually the truth of him being the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And because of that, there was a, a lack of belief. And the Bible says that that uh, unbelief among the people had hamstrung the people so much and even the Lord that he was unable to do any miracles because of their unbelief. They lacked faith because they saw him after the flesh. Folks, we sometimes relate to our wives and our husbands and our kids and maybe those that are closest around us. We see them every day in church or every Sunday or at the men's meeting or at the women's meetings or whatever the case it may, might be. We begin to see these people so much, we know them after the flesh. Sometimes even our pastors, and that's a sad thing, when you begin to, well, I've known pastor so-and-so for so long, and pretty soon what he has to say doesn't mean anything to you anymore because you've become too familiar with them. Maybe there were too many barbecues and too many going out and doing things in the flesh uh, uh, together, just, just, just fellowshipping, and, and, and you, you lost the spirituality, the part you, you forgot that he still walks in a ministry. And, and, and so we begin, and that's just one example, okay? But you, we, we begin to see these things. We look at our wives, we look at our husbands, our children. We, we relate to them not in the spirit, not in who they are in Christ, but we relate to them after the flesh. And so we're very quick when we relate to people after the flesh to give them a piece of our mind. And they're quick to give us a piece of their mind sometimes. And so what happens though, folks, is that we begin to lose spiritual respect for one another. We end up hurting our witness. How do we combat that? How do we change? Well, one, one key, and you can write this down if you want, the Bible says be continually filled with the Spirit of God, with the Holy Spirit. We need to reach in every day and not take yesterday's blessings for granted. There are some people, folks, they live today based on what happened in 1972. Back in 72, I remember the revivals and I was touched by God and filled with the Holy Spirit and blah, blah, blah. Folks, and I'm not putting it down. I'm not being facetious with you or sarcastic. Those are all good, true, legitimate things. But let, listen to me. You cannot live today on yesterday's blessings. All right? We need to have a continual infilling and a continual relationship with the Lord progressively on a day-by-day -day basis. <laughs> the Bible talks about that. Uh, the, the newness every morning of, 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 of the Lord, okay, in our lives. It ought to be a refreshing, a new thing. We ought to feel as, as, as empowered by the Lord spiritually. We ought to feel as aware. We ought to feel as excited. We ought to feel as compassionate. We ought to have as much hunger for uh, seeing the lost saved today as we did the, yesterday or the first day that we experienced Christ in our own lives. Okay, so one of them is be ye continually filled with the Spirit. Now, I don't have the scripture in front of me for that, but folks, you can look it up. All you got to do is Google be ye filled with the Holy, continually with the Holy Spirit. Just Google it in your phone and it'll give you the scripture. I can't do that right now because I'm on the phone <laughs> with you guys. Okay, and I didn't plan to, of course, I, I, I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, so God just gave that to me and it was not actually one of my thoughts about this before I came online to bring the message to you, all right? But being filled with the Holy Spirit on a continual basis is important because it helps keep our spirit right in difficult situations. Another one, and one of the, the, really the one that I want to get into um, this evening, and we're going to go to the Word of God for that, okay? We're going to talk for a minute about the fruit of the Spirit, okay? And we're going to go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, Galatians 5, 22. 
Galatians 5.22 says this, okay? It says, For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and I want to keep reading, um, meekness, temperament, against these uh, things or against such there is no law. Okay, so again, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. <laughs> again, such there's no such law, such law. Right away, we can take a couple of words right here. Let, let me pick them out. One of them for you is love. We got to eat love. One of them is um, peace because we, we, we need to walk in love. We should walk in love. It's the fruit of the Spirit, even in unloving and in difficult situations. Peace. We ought to carry the peace of God with us no matter what adverse situations are among us. Or, or among us, or come to us. No matter what somebody says about us, folks, we need to, they, they can be as angry and upset as can be. We ought to have the peace of God. Peace be still. We ought to be able to deal with it and deal with our own emotions. And love is very important in doing that. Peace is doing that. Long suffering. Oh boy, that's a big one. What is long suffering? <laughs> to suffer a long time sometimes with some people's attitudes and some things, maybe things we go through, maybe things other people are putting on top of us, but we don't just totally blow our cool, lose our stack, and, and give them a piece of our mind all the time. And even if we think, think we've got a good reason, and even if there is a good reason to do it, sometimes, folks, we need the, we need the tact to know that we need to move in long suffering. We need to be I thank God I cut myself off here in, in what I was about to say, but I was just thinking, how many people have been long-suffering with you in your life? I think about myself. <laughs> oh, my Lord have mercy. You know, I think sometimes I was the, one of the most obnoxious people, and I don't know how some people put up with me, but there were some. I, I can think of a, one, one good example. God bless him. I, I will name his name was Pastor Curtis Sample. I would not be in ministry today if it were not for that man. You talk about long suffering. This guy was a man of God, and he my my all all my faults, every fault that I probably ever had, manifested itself to that man at some point in time or another during the time we knew. But that man had so much love, so much um, peace in his heart, and so much long suffering towards me that when I saw that. I realized he had something that I didn't have, but that I needed and that I wanted. And I knew, I found out that I could only get it through, through my relationship with Christ. And it encouraged me, it became an example to me. And I only wish that I, I, I could be half of what that man, uh, what, what he is. He's still alive, so I'll say what he is. He, he, he was a, just a tremendous blessing to me. When, when others had given up on me, he always had faith for me. That's long-suffering, folks. Are there people in your lives that you feel like you just get, want to give up? Are they anger you? They get you upset? You're ready to say, this is it, I've had enough? What about long-suffering? Remember that word, okay? Remember it. Besides long-suffering, okay, there's gentleness. Goodness. Gentleness is one of the words I like. It, there are times that we feel... We need some tough love here. We better be harsh. Well, what about gentleness? Folks, again, people are watching you. We need to have the right spirit. Where does it come from? The Holy Spirit. God will bring it to us. He gives it to us as we reach in by faith and appropriate it. How? Because he puts within us, the Bible says, to will and to do of his good pleasure. So that comes from the Lord. But we need it. Now let's look at a few others. Meekness. What about this one? Oh, this is a good one. This kind of hits the spot that I was talking about. Temperance. Verse 23. Temperance. Temperance. Against such things there is no law. Folks, we need temperance. I've been in churches before. None that any of you out there know of, by the way. So don't start guessing. But I've been in churches because I've spoken to so many over the years. I've been in churches before where people were very intolerant sometimes of one another. And they, they, they never show temperance. They show temper, <laughs> but no temperance. 
A temperance is being able to control your temper, to be even tempered. To, a, a, again, and all of this kind of melds into uh, what I would describe as patience. Being patient in, in, in impatient situations. Patience is not just a matter of, of not being in a hurry, but it's a matter of being sometimes patient with people. That, that comes into long suffering. Allowing God to do his work within somebody, even though you're wondering, when is this going to be over? I'm tired of this. I'm done with this. And we want to hurry this situation along or we want to get out of this situation. Look, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm out of here. And God is saying, patience. Why? Because I am still doing a work. I am not finished yet with that person. You might be finished with them. I'm not. And since you represent me, you need to be patient. Okay? Let's look at another scripture, folks. Okay? And, and, and we're going to end this pretty soon. But I think it's important. So turn with me to your in, in your Bibles. And just so you know, I'm reading out of the King James uh, uh, version of the Bible to, uh, tonight. So your, your, your version may say a little different of a thing, but it, the meaning is going to be the same. All right, and so I want to go to uh, Philippians, the book of Philippians chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles, turn there for a minute. I'll give you a second while I take a sip of my drink here. Oh, praise God. Mm, tastes so good. Amen. Philippians chapter 4. And let's go to verse 4. And I'm going to read 4 and 5, okay? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, that word moderation in some of your translations probably says, let your forbearance be made known to all men. Or in others, it, it, the meaning is, though, folks, patience. Let your patience, your moderation, uh, your, ten, your, your um, uh, a forbearing spirit be known to all men. That is the definition of what moderation is. And it pertains to Dealing with others. So when we're talking about let your moderation be known unto all men, we're not talking about moderate living. Like, in other words, don't be extravagant, be moderate. Okay, no, that's not what the word means in this context. In this context, the word means be have a forbearing spirit. And if you don't know what forbearing means, that means being having a patient spirit towards other people. It's, it, it, in the context of this means in your relationship to others, be patient and be forbearing. So this falls in line with the, some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that I mentioned to you. So when you go and you tell people, I am filled with the Spirit, I, I, I speak in tongues, I have the outward manifestation of my baptism by that heavenly language or that, that, la that special prayer language that God has given me. We speak in tongues of men and of angels, right? But God has given me that language so I'm filled with the Spirit, but you're not showing the fruits of the Spirit. Folks, there's something wrong. <clears throat> so I would suppose that this, this study this evening would be more of an exhortation to you than anything else. I'm exhorting you to watch what you do in public and, 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 and when you're around others, and, and in private too, but, but certainly around other people. Because those other people are watching you. And it's so easy to feel justified to, to, to react, to say certain things. I heard something the other day, and I, I, ho I hope I can get it right. I, I probably can't get the, the, the quote exactly right, so I'm not going to even try. But, but it came down to this. It, it, it meant, it, it essentially was this, that godly wisdom sometimes is leaving things that could be said unsaid. Do you understand that godly wisdom is sometimes leaving things that could be said 
unsaid. That, that, that really kind of nails down where we ought to be. We don't always have to say what we know or what we think. Or when we don't always have to express how we feel. There's a time to, to speak and a time to hold your, your, spe- your speech and be silent. And so I pray that you'll take the message that I'm bringing you uh, this evening. And maybe there's a special person in your life. Maybe it's a, a family member, maybe a, a husband, maybe a wife, maybe a child, a ch- your, one of your children, maybe somebody in the church, maybe a friend of me. <laughs> a friend that's not always a friend, you know. You just sometimes can't take them anymore. Want to say something, leave quickly, get out of here. Don't want to see you. Could you please excuse yourself for about a month, you know, or something like that. Folks, I mean, we, we, we need to um, have a right spirit and a right attitude. When I think reflect back on the situation that occurred to me today, I'm really glad that I held my peace and I didn't say the things that I wanted to say and what was initially on my mind and what, what came at me. What, and, and many of us are impulsive when we say the first thing that comes to our mind is the way we are, but God can change us. I hope this today in, in this lesson that each one of you will think about that person. And I'm sure certain people will come to mind because we all have those type of people in our lives. And we all certainly, if we don't, if you don't, I'm pretty sure you do. But if you don't, we all get into situations at times where we want to give somebody a piece of our mind. Uh, but we pray, I pray that, that God will put a, a guard over your, over your tongue and over your spirit. Because the person that you give a piece of your mind to today might be the person that God wanted you to minister to tomorrow. So with that said, I, I don't think I really need to say anymore. Um, I've kind of given you a chapter and verse and, and, and shared the word with you. So let's, uh, let's close this evening with a word of prayer, okay? And um, then I, I, if you'll bear with me before you sign off, please. I, I do have just two quick announcements, all right, and then I'll be done. Um, Father, I thank you so much for this message, Lord. I pray that, uh, Lord, that you just help it to bear fruit in all of our hearts, myself included. Lord, we're, we're, we're continual works in progress. The broken clay is being molded into the pot, and you're the ultimate potter. Lord, you know what you're doing. Father, help us to submit to you and to walk with you. Your words are spirit, they're life. Lord, I know that they're creative and they're going to create your will and those of us that are open enough to receive it and so i pray that that happens in the name of jesus we pray i thank you for it amen amen so before you sign out just two quick things number one okay uh, i'll eventually have these on youtube all these messages will be imported over i just haven't gotten around to doing it yet uh so you'll be able to see them there too but for, 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 for those of you here with me on Facebook Live where this uh, message is originating, there's two things I'd like you to do. Number one, you have a share button. If this message has been a blessing to you and you feel it could help somebody else, all of you have friends that on your Facebook pages that I don't have. I, I'll probably never have an opportunity to minister to them either. Not, not online and probably not in person. Maybe some of them, but probably most of them I won't. But you can because they're your friends. All you got to do is hit the share button at the bottom of your Facebook and share this oh, on your uh, uh, timeline uh, so that others or, 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 uh, can watch it also or share it so that uh, they can, they, when they look at your Facebook, they'll, they'll listen to the message. And that's a way that we can get this message to them and all, all the way around the world. And believe me, I've done it with some of our messages. So I hope that you'll help me with that. The second thing is, for me, hit, hit, hit the like button. Uh, I, I see so many people look on. I, I, I Sometimes after I finish, there's 23 to 50 uh, li- uh, people that have watched the message. And I know they like the message because I, I know who comes on. I have a way that I can, I can see that. 
But I, 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 I don't always see them hit the like button. I don't think it's because they don't like the message. They listen to it or listen to a part of it or maybe all of it and go in and tune something else to into something else later. But if you'll hit the like button, it helps me because then my friends, and I've got quite a few on my Facebook page, there are many that I'm praying for. And if they see a picture of me and they see in, instead of maybe five or ten likes, they see... 20, 30, 40, 50 likes, they're going to probably open up that page and listen because they're going to say, wow, you know, a lot of people like that guy's um, uh, post or message today. Maybe there's something there that, that, that could help me that I need to hear. And they'll listen. And that's what it's all about, folks. It's just, it's not about me. Um, it's all about souls. I, I, I want to get the word of God. I want to get the gospel to other people. And for those that are saved, I want to help them to grow. And that's all, all it is. And so I hope that you'll help me do that and get this gospel out to the nations, to the world. Amen. So I want to thank you for it. Um, this will be my last night of our, uh, <laughs> what should I say, shotgun Tuesday night study in the words where we had a, like a study, study in the word marathon. I think I've done it for like five or six nights in a row while I've tested out my studio. I think I've pretty much got got this down now to where we, we can go back to just every Tuesday. Our normal starting time is at 8, 8 p.m. I apologize. I switched it again from uh, 8 to 9, but it was because, again, I got tied up on something, couldn't get finished in time to get back here to start at 8. But, I, but our normal starting time, believe it or not, <laughs> our normal starting time is always 8 p.m. on Tuesdays. So if you'll tune in at 8 p.m. on Tuesdays, we should be here, and we'll be ready to go. You'll see my banner It'll say Misha Softia Ministries, or you'll see a page with weed on it or something, and maybe you'll hear some noise in the background, or but you'll know that we're here, and just wait for me to come on, and, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so I just want to encourage you um, to um, just just keep keep coming on. Uh, tomorrow is Tuesday, so we will have our Tuesday study in the Word uh, on our official uh, date that we're supposed to do it at 8 p.m., so join me then. And so I'll be looking forward to seeing you. And I don't think uh, one other one other brief announcement. Probably uh, I think this Sunday, I believe I'm supposed to be in Menifee, California, uh, this Sunday morning. And so I'll be broadcasting live from uh, from Menifee uh, on Sunday. And I, and this will be a regular church service. I'll be speaking there. And it's the service time is 10 a.m. I believe that. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll probably go live um, at around ten thirty to ten forty five. So if you start tuning in and you just kind of hang out around, uh, uh, say anywhere from ten ten twenty to ten forty, uh, by that time I'll come on and you can catch the message live. Okay, so I I really do hope you join me. And again, I want to thank every one of you that have come on uh, for listening. I hope that these messages have helped you as much as they've, they've been a blessing for me to be able to share with you. And again, I want to thank you very much. Once I get the YouTube things going the way they, they are, you can go ahead and subscribe. You can do that now, actually, if you go to YouTube on Misha. Soft, Misha, just look at my name. Misha, M-I-S-C-H-A, soft D-A. S is in Sam, A is in Adam, F is in Frank, D is in David, I is in Indian, E is in Edward. Misha, soft D-A. And if you just look up my name, you'll see a bunch of uh, videos and you can like those, and there's probably a subscribe button. If you hit the subscribe, yeah, that's good, because um, the more that I get, the better it, it'll be for me, and the easier it'll be for me to go actually live. And pretty soon I'm going to be doing the Facebook Lives and YouTubes all in one message together. And that's where we're, we're heading to. We'll be doing that soon. So uh, those that are watching me on Facebook Live will, will also watch me on YouTube at the same time. Okay? Anyway, look, you know what I say always? Keep your feet to the ground. Keep your head to the sky. God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you very, very much for joining me. And I'll see you tomorrow night at 8 p.m. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye.